Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome to another tarot reading from me. So today's topic is going to be on predictions for December 2024. I actually have, you know, kind of argued back and forth with myself about whether I should still be doing a reading for December because we are already on the second as I am recording this, but I really felt this very strong drive to do a reading for December 2024 in particular, as opposed to doing a, um, you know, predictions for the next month or predictions for the next 30 days of timeless reading, which was the alternative I was considering. Um, so I felt very drawn to doing this particular reading. So I think that's because some people really need to hear it. And here it goes. I hope you enjoy it. As usual, I will start by saying that I have chosen these crystals intuitively, basically meditated on the question, asked spirit which crystals I should choose for the reading. These are the crystals that came out in this particular order, and this is for those of you who would like to choose with a crystal and just a crystal. Pile number one, you have this tiger's eye crystal. Got me a while to focus it, but here it is. Pile number one, this is your crystal. Pile number two, you have the red jasper crystal. Pile number two, sorry, pile number three, you have the blue aragonite crystal. All right, so these are your options. Trying to center them somehow. All right, pile number one, number two, number three. As usual, my recommendation is that you take some moments to meditate upon the question, exhale longer than you inhale. You can also address it to a spiritual guide, God, or whoever you worship, or to your guardian angels. And after you spend some time meditating, allowing your mind to go blank and, you know, keeping your eyes closed, you can open your eyes and choose the first pile that stands out to you intuitively without overthinking it. And if you feel drawn to more than one, of course, you are free to watch several or even all of them and just take whichever messages resonate. Before I sign off, I will remind you to please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done so already, it's the easiest way to support me and it is free. And if you want to see when I upload a new reading, of course, click on the notifications bell. Also, comment in the comment section with any feedback you would like to give or ideas for future topics that you would like me to cover on this channel. Thank you, and I will see you at your reading. All right, so this is the selection part for the people who want to choose with a card as well as a crystal. I'm going to use the Solitary Witch deck. So let's see what comes out. Spirit, tell me about pile number one. What is coming towards them in the month of December 2024? What do they need to hear about December 2024? The tiger's eye. Spirit, what does pile number two need to hear about December 2024? Spirit, what does pile number three need to hear about December 2024? The people who chose the blue aragonite crystal, what is coming towards them? What do they need to hear? Help me out. Okay. So let's see. Pile number one we have her knowledge runs deep with number 12 pile number two we have the gathering with number 19 pile number three we have her herb garden with number two okay so these are your options. I'm going to focus a bit. All right. So this is for those of you who would like to choose with a card as well as a crystal pile. Number one, you have this card over here and or this tiger's eye crystal. Pile 
Number two, you have this card over here and or this red jasper crystal. Pile number three, you have this card over here and or this blue aragonite crystal. All right. So these are your options. Let me try to arrange them. I don't know why I have the need to arrange them. Anyway, so these are your options. Pile number one, number two, number three. Once again, I will mention that I have chosen these crystals intuitively by meditating upon the question of what will December 2024 bring for you. And these are the crystals that came out intuitively. And my recommendation is that you meditate upon the question. You can even meditate on more specific issues or questions that you want answered about the month of December, maybe. And spend some time meditating. Allow your mind to go blank. Breathe deeply. Exhale long, longer than you inhale. That will help center you and calm you down. And then open your eyes and choose the first pile that stands out to you intuitively without overthinking it. And if you feel drawn to more than one pile, feel free to watch several or even all of them and just see whichever messages resonate. Before I sign off, I will remind you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. It's the easiest way to support me and it is free. And click on the notifications bell if you want to see when I upload a new tarot reading. Also, please comment in the comment section with any feedback you would like to give or ideas for future topics that you would like me to cover on this channel. Thank you, and I will see you at your pile. So, welcome pile number one. This is your reading if you have chosen this Tiger's Eye Crystal and or this card with number 12 that says her knowledge runs deep. Number 12... Um, is actually connected to Jupiter. So it's interesting that they say their, her knowledge runs deep. Jupiter is the planet connected to studies, education, and everything connected to knowledge and broadening one's horizon. So I think whoever did this card must know that to some extent. All right, so this is going to be the selection phase. I'm gonna add timestamps. You can skip directly to the interpretation if you don't wanna sit through it. I'm gonna start with the tarot cards this time. So, Spirit, tell me about pile number one, the people who chose the Tiger's Eye Crystal. What is the month of December 2024 going to bring for them? We have King of Pentacles. We have Seven of Pentacles. We have Nine of Swords. We have Four of Swords, we have Ace of Swords, and Five of Wands. All right, Spirit, tell me about pile number one. What is the month of December 2024 going to bring for them? What do they need to hear right now about the month of December? Tell me, Spirit. We have the Knight of Pentacles under the King of Pentacles. We have, oh my gosh, the King of Pentacles again. Oh, uh, wow. Already, oh, wait, let me, so you can see them, all right. We have the Knight of Swords. We have the Three of Wands. We have the Fool. And we have the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, let's get some oracle cards. Spirit, tell me about pile number one, the people who chose the tiger's eye. What do they need to hear about December 2024? What is coming towards them in December 2024? Spirit, what is coming towards pile number one in December 2024? What do they need to hear about the month of December? All right, so let's start. Okay, so for the first Oracle card is the 12, her knowledge runs deep, which is number 12 boiled down to number three, which is ruled by Jupiter, 
we have power this card with power we have spiritual message number 41 which boils down to a number five you also have the five of wands here but i'm going to get to that later actually you know i'm going to get another card Spirit, tell me what's going to happen for pile number one in the month of december 2024 we have Armadillo, number seven, Groundedness. Armadillo, all right? And we have this card from the Shaman Wisdom Cards, number 58, which is a number 13, which boils down to a number four. Okay, Hematite, Masculine. I think this is meant to be, oh, it says Foot Chakra. Is that a thing? Or is it Root Chakra? This is what the card says, though, so... Anyway, hematite, masculine, foot chakra, earth. Let's see what the card has to say. I mean, what the booklet has to say about this. I'm going to read it from the booklet. I am hematite. I am the magnetic stone that grounds, balances, stabilizes, and reconnects you to Mother Earth. I am courage and the protection stone of warriors. Your abilities to concentrate are enhanced by my very presence. I amplify the positive aspects of your personality, encouraging optimism and trust. I am the rock of invention and creativity. I bring advantage to legal situations. I am powerful and useful. I am survival. Wow. I mean, uh, you have armadillo with groundedness, number seven, and then you also have, and you have power and you have this, Card 58, Hematite, that also speaks of groundedness. So there are already strong messages. On top of which, you have the King of Pentacles. Where is it? Here it is. The King of Pentacles coming out twice for this pile. But there's one more that I want to clarify. Spirit, please clarify the Wheel of Fortune here. Please clarify the Wheel of Fortune I don't know about this one. Six of Pentacles. So I'm going to stick it somewhere. I'm going to leave it over here. Actually, wait, I'm going to leave it underneath, okay? Just don't that it's a clarification. So we have the Six of Pentacles clarifying the Wheel of Fortune. But let me start at the beginning. I see that at the beginning of the month, all right, or when you start to see this reading, basically, you are the King of Pentacles clarified by the Knight of Pentacles, all right? And so this means that you are doing pretty well financially. You feel pretty in control of your life. And you're very focused on career. I can see that. And you're doing well, all right? You are seeing the fruits of your labor. You're probably someone who has worked consistently towards your goals. And in recent history, you have been in a position where you slowly but surely have been reaping the rewards of your actions. The Seven of Pentacles also clarified by the King of Pentacles. So you're very King of Pentacles. I would not be surprised if you also have dominant positions in Earth signs in your horoscope, but I'm going to get to more astrological notes towards the end of the reading. But what I see here is a lot of tenacity, a lot of energy that is, you know, focused, determined, potentially, again, a lot of Saturn, maybe. Uh, or maybe you're going through a lot of Saturn transits that have really, you know, made you disciplined and focused and hardworking. So you are being supported by your ability to work hard. You are someone who is determined, um, diligent, you know, you just don't back down when it comes to locking onto a goal. And this is your energy, right? This is what is going to support you throughout this month is your staying power, your disciplined, your ability, your discipline, your ability to plan ahead. And um, also the ability to manage finances very well to manage your resources, not just finances. So it could be your time, uh, you know, your health, even your food, how you pay your bills, all of that, your ability to be down to earth and pragmatic is supporting you. Now, the nine of swords clarified by the knight of swords here. 
on the downside, so to, so to speak, you have the anxiety, all right? So you have Nine of Swords clarified by the Knight of Swords. This shows that you're someone who, even though you are seeing steady progress, you have seen the fruits of your labor, labor in recent history, you're still very frustrated with how things are going, all right? So you want things faster. You feel like you're missing out on things. You might have, you might be the kind of people who are having a lot of FOMO and YOLO, you know. Um, you're f afraid that you are, you know, missing out on opportunities. Some of you could also just be tired and maybe reaching burnout, which is not good. Okay, but I'm going to see more details again with the astrological placements as well. But the Nine of Swords, clarified by Knight of Swords, is definitely showing that you are pushing yourself too hard. All right. It shows that you have a tendency to maybe not really respect your limitations, you know, because you're someone who's very ambitious and maybe you feel like you're getting close to getting what you want. You're afraid of missing out on opportunities. So I don't know, maybe you're someone who has finally gotten the job that you've wanted or the you've gotten into the university that you wanted or you finally have your business taking off. And because of that, you are frustrated and you are terrified of saying no to opportunities because you don't know if these are going to, you know, come again in the future. But this is definitely going to work against you, okay? So if I were to give you a first piece of advice about the month of December is that you need to make time for rest because you might be running yourself into the ground. And remember that ultimately resting is also actually going to increase your chances and your opportunities in the long run and make sure that you maintain your health so that you make the most of the opportunities that are going to come into the future and don't be worried about missing out because rest is your you know prerogative it's your it's your absolute necessity and you should never feel bad about you know setting time time aside to rest basically and this means, you know, not just getting enough sleep, it means doing things you love. I feel like there's also a tendency to sacrifice things for duty or, again, it could be just a long-term goal that you have worked for a very long time to achieve. But you still need to set time on a regular basis, daily even, to relax, to unwind, to do things that you just love doing without thinking about, you know, oh my god, I'm wasting time right now. So that's that's the first message, all right? What we have here with the Four of Swords and the Three of Wands. This is your action. This is the recommended course of action when it comes to what Spirit is telling you to do. So Four of Swords, oh my gosh. <laughs> I actually didn't even think about this. I, I didn't even look at the card, honestly, until I pulled it out. Um, Four of Swords is actually about resting, all right? It's about resting and the three of wands. So what spirit is telling you is that you need to take a break to gain perspective. So don't get so caught up into, you know, your ambitions, your goals. And again, it might be that you are chasing something and you're finally seeing something happen in the way that you have wanted to happen with making money. I'm, I'm seeing especially money and career here. Okay. So you're finally seeing results in that area, but... Don't get so caught up in, in your vision that you might forget to, um, you know, gain perspective. And in, in forgetting to gain, gain perspective, you might miss out on opportunities that you don't even notice because you're so fixated on that, you know, particular goal happening in that very particular way, if that makes sense. So, for instance, let's say your original goal was to... Uh, make a certain amount of money until the end of the year and you're finally seeing and, and you had a plan from the beginning that I'm going to do this like this you know I'm going to sell this product and you're focused because now you see that oh I'm really selling this product but maybe spirit is telling you that if you actually stopped chasing um, selling the product you might actually see other ways of making money faster or making you know bringing you the things that you want in a way in a different way that is actually less stressful and might be readily available but you are too focused on you know fixated on your ideas you know so spirit is definitely telling you to relax to recenter you know like in google maps you know <laughs> it's like you know when you search for a destination in google maps and it asks you to recenter at some point where you might be you may be i don't know lost your whereabouts or you want to know how long you have until you reach your destination. You have the recenter option, right? 
it's kind of like this is what spirit is telling you you need to take some time to um you know take perspective to put things into perspective and you know gather your whereabouts see where you stand and see if there maybe are better ways of doing things or opportunities that maybe you're not seeing because you're too caught up in details and this is also though about spirit kind of gently nudging you into getting out of your comfort zone which kind of goes hand in hand with what i have said so far so i think for many of you like i said i think most of you this is about career finances life goals okay so um, this is about spirit telling you that there might be better ways of doing things, of getting what you want, and you need to be open-minded, and you need to get out of your comfort zone in order to make the most of those opportunities. Three of Wands can also speak of opportunities, you know, shortly coming your way. And a number three, again, is ruled by Jupiter, and you also have this 12, her knowledge runs deep, all right? Jupiter is also about putting things into perspective. So I definitely see this as a confirmation, you know, you having to get into more Jupiterian energy. We also have this, um, we had that message in the, um, the booklet about this card, right? That said you need to have faith, something along those lines of like uh, having faith that things are going to happen and also about you have the ability to be grounded and, you know, solid and powerful. Look at this, we also have power. So spirit is showing up here telling you not to sweat it because you have the ability to weather any storm. This is what I'm seeing. All right. And here we have the Ace of Swords and the Fool card. So what I'm seeing here is that after you take some time to do the introspection, okay, a new path is going to open. You're going to get an idea. The Ace of Swords clarified by, by the Fool. This is a totally new perspective. This is you reaching the top of the mountain. And look, we even have an eagle here, right? So you, eagles see things in perspective because they fly really high and they see the whole, you know, area. And you are going to be this, you know, towards the end of the, the month of the 30 days here. You're going to gain a new perspective once you have rested, once you have, you know, taken some time to get enough sleep, to disconnect a little bit, uh, you know, with the Four of Swords, to kind of loosen your grip on the outcome, basically, because you're someone who's very fixated on a particular outcome happening in a particular way. You're actually going to get a better idea of doing things or an inspiration of doing things in a different way. And this is showing also a new enthusiasm, all right? We have a renewal of enthusiasm, mental and emotional energy with the fool. So this is looking really positive so far. We also have five of wands clarified by the wheel of fortune, clarified by the six of pentacles. So the wheel of fortune is kind of like a card of ready or not, here I come. Um, it's basically, and, and it's also, if you look at the card, let me get it out. We have the four fixed signs represented here. We have Taurus, Leo, um, I think that one is Scorpio, the Vulture, and that one is Aquarius, right? So we have the four fixed signs on this. And fixed signs are not signs that like to change. These are signs that are fixed in their ways. And they're stuck in, you know, kind of like, probably like many of you have with all this Earth energy. Earth is also very fixed in nature. Earth people don't like to change a lot. Not even Virgo, which is uh, a mutable sign. So we have a lot of fixed energy here in this spread. And Spirit is definitely telling you that, you know, going hand in hand with the Three of Wands, you need to get out of your comfort zone. And with the Wheel of Fortune, this is showing that by the end of the month, one way or another, you will be thrust into some kind of a situation where you will have to change. And it depends on you whether you're going to be prepared for that, you know, mentally and emotionally, and do the work that I was talking about previously, or if it's going to be a really painful experience, right? Because you're still very clinging, very clingy to the very specific outcome that you want. We also have Five of Wands, Wheel of Fortune, Six of Pentacles. On a very, let's say, on a more specific uh, level, this could show conflict, a situation of conflict, 
And this is really specific. Six of Pentacles. This could be about subordinates. This could be about people that you're teaching. If you are a teacher, this is very specific about the teaching environment, people at work. Uh, Six of Pentacles is connected to teaching. It's connected to service. So this could be conflicts happening with, uh, again, could be subordinates. It could be coworkers. Um, it could be even clients, you know, people that you have so, you know, sold some services or products towards, you know, there might be potential conflicts here, but whatever this is, okay, this experience is meant to help you grow. And if you are someone who already does the work, you know, and you're not tired, you're not exhausted, and you're able to see uh, you're you're able to control everything, your affairs properly and see things clearly, you might avoid this altogether, basically. Because this is showing you, let me put it to you like this, this is how I see tarot readings and this is how I see horoscopes to a large extent, okay? There are some aspects that are faded and there are some aspects that we can control. And basically, what a lot of the times what a tarot reading shows is things unfolding, how things will unfold if you don't change anything, okay? So it's not like 100%. You're going to have a very unpleasant experience. How unpleasant this is, to a large extent, depends on you. If you're open to growing, if you're open to thinking outside of the box, leaving your comfort zone, opening your eyes wide, and paying attention to your circumstances, and, you know, uh, I think this is also, again, if, if this is someone who has a business, like for instance, right? Even if you don't have a business, even let's say you're working in a team, this is the three of wands is telling you to look outside of your little world, right? To gain perspective. So if you're working, I don't know, let's say you're a programmer, right? And you have to work with a marketing team or you have to work with some other team. This is about you trying to put things into perspective about how your product or your service is impacting and fitting with other people's work and services. And that will help you anticipate potential arguments and, you know, potential misunderstandings happening here. Five of Wands means you might be dealing with people who are um, sometimes from a different culture, but uh, whether they're from a different culture or not, people from very different perspectives, okay? So you're going to be put in a, some kind of a position where you have to negotiate, you have to get along with people and... Um, yeah, maybe even find some kind of a solution to a conflict, basically. But overall, the Six of Pentacles shows that you are going to be guiding others. So by the end of this month, this is really fascinating. There's so much like fluidity here because we have so much Jupiter energy. Again, Jupiter is one of the strongest planets that connect to education. So some of you are definitely going to be put in a position where you're going to be teaching by the end of by the end of this month, you know, um, either like literally teaching or again, it could be teaching all kinds of in all kinds of different ways. You know, it could be you are going to become a mentor, you're going to become a psychotherapist, I don't know, a consultant. Um, somehow you you will be put in a position where you have to guide others that are not as uh, educated as you or not as enlightened as you in a particular field groundedness so overall this month i'm not going to sugarcoat it is going to test you all right this is also going to test you in your ability to weather the storm this is why you have all these messages about power and groundedness all right this is what i've seen let me get some astro cards spirit tell me about pile number one what is coming towards them in the month of december 2024 Tell me, Spirit, what's going to come towards them in December? Oh, let's see. We have Capricorn, the boss. <laughs> we have Moon, Feelings, and Subconscious. We have Virgo. Already we have two Earth signs. Such confirmations. We also have Pisces, the dreamer. We have Uranus, change, and new beginnings. Yes, such a strong confirmation. Also, 
Uranus in um, tropical astrology is the co-ruler of Aquarius, one of the fixed signs that I was talking about. So there is definitely some kind of a change happening, okay? There is a, a change. Here's the thing. The most optimistic way to read the end of the month, okay, and one of the most, most general ways to read it as well, is that you're moving away from conflict. You're going to be moving away from conflict. You're going to be moving more towards an attitude of service. And also, if you're someone who has a business, having an attitude of service is going to help you avoid conflict and avoid, um, and not just avoid conflict, but also increase your profit and increase your success overall. Okay, we have... This is an opposition. So again, I can see this as a clash as well. This could be about clashing with people from different perspectives than you. So I see this as a clarification of the five of wands. We have the moon, feelings, and subconscious. So when the moon is present, this also speaks of nurturing yourself, okay? Healing, taking a break. The four of swords. Uh, we also have the number four coming up quite a few times, which makes me think of the fourth house, which is ruled by the moon. So this could also show you would benefit not just from resting, but maybe spending a bit more time at home, taking it easy. You know, if you're someone who, let's say, has to go to the office uh, or has to go to work physically and be active a lot, just find more times of, you know, unwinding and spending time in introspection as well. The moon is also about the subconscious. So I feel, I think going hand in hand with the four swords and the three of wands this is really specific, maybe, but some of you could definitely benefit from psychotherapy. And this is pot potentially saying that you might have blind spots, okay? It's like, it's not just that you are, well, it's still that you might be fixating on a particular outcome, but that particular outcome could be driven by some kind of a limiting belief or something subconscious that has been, you know, affecting you maybe even since childhood right? So that could be a thing. But Capricorn, the boss, I mean, come on. That is the king of pentacles right there. You are a boss. I don't know who you are, pile number one, but you are going places, okay? Either way, you're someone who's very determined, but it's just that spirit is telling you there might be an easier way to do things, right? This is what the message is. And also, um, not to be too, I guess, narrow-minded for lack of a better way to explain it short-sighted let me put it like that you know don't don't get to a position where you can't see the woods for the trees virgo is also about health and it's about daily routines so spirit is telling you to rethink your daily routines again focus on your health take care of yourself and also it's about attention to details pay attention to details okay let me get the charms and the astro dice. Bear, tell me about pile number one. What is coming for them in the month of December 2024? Oh my god. We have Jupiter again. <laughs> I mean, we have, well, we have Jupiter for the first time because it came out in energies. We also have the number 11, which is that um, 11th sign can be Aquarius, can also be the house of gains. And we have Scorpio, the sign of transformation. So very, very positive and uh, very strong confirmations. Jupiter, the see, here's the thing, the positive side, and I don't know if I focused on this enough, the positive side with Jupiter is there are definitely opportunities coming in for you. There are definitely opportunities, but you need to be rested. You need to be um, a little bit more detached, right? Here we have the fixed signs again. And loosening your grip a little bit, taking that eagle's view of, you know, just allowing yourself to lift up a little bit and, you know, put things into perspective, that will help you make the right decisions and make the most of the opportunities coming towards you. Scorpio, like I said, very strong focus on transformation. And 11th house is also the house of gains. So this is potentially also about you um, getting not just more success in your career and more financial success especially but also maybe gaining more popularity increasing your network right and i feel like spirit is even nudging you in that direction like make the most of opportunities where you might get to mingle or get to know new people 
All right, this is what I'm seeing. Spirit, tell me about pile number one. What is coming towards them? What is coming towards them? Okay. Oh my gosh. I have 2024. Yes, we are in 2024. Thank you, Spirit. Um, okay, so I think 2024 came out because this could have been a very significant year for you. You know, um, whether you realize it or not, this may have been a year that somehow is a pivotal time in your life that will shape you for years to come. We also have beautiful, we have blessed, we have family here, and we have dream. Here we go with Pisces. Pisces is also about dreaming. And see, here's the thing. Four of Swords and Pisces can also be an indication that you would benefit from meditating and anything that engages your imagination. We have the death sign, which again makes me think of transformation. We have this like pulse and heart stuff like, and I think this is the fool. And I don't see this, honestly, as particularly romantic. So, I don't know. If you're someone who was hoping about messages about romance, maybe check another pile. Um, but I'm seeing this as like a renewal of your enthusiasm. A renewal of you falling in love with something. An idea, you know, a, a renewed confidence, enthusiasm, drive, you know, something you want to achieve. Passion, basically. We have the turtle, which makes me think of slow and steady wins the race, you know, uh, careful to pace yourself so that you don't burn out. We have the cat, which is very fitting because cats always land on their feet and you are going to be heading towards that wheel of fortune situation. We have the scissors, which could be about cutting ties. See... This is, you know, since it's the end of the year, this could also be about letting go of bad habits. And make, that's what it makes me think of, especially with the Virgo energy coming through. And we have the heart. Again, heart means, again, in this context, I'm not seeing this as romance in particular, although you could also be maybe in more of a open to romance sort of energy, but that's just because you're going to become more vital, more enthusiastic. You're going to be opening your heart to life in general by the end of this month and we also have this thing which kind of looks to me it looks like an earring that's the main thing that i'm thinking about right now so this also just makes me think of uh, take more time to smell the roses you know enjoy beauty enjoy the little things enjoy creative hobby hobbies i don't know why i said hobbits <laughs> i've been talking for too long i have to take a break and drink some tea or something um but yeah, this is what I'm seeing, you know, like enjoying yourself also with the Virgo. I, this is very specific, but I think maybe some of you have thought about designing, designing or maybe even jewelry design in particular. So this could be, I mean, again, the scissors could be about tailoring. So anyway, if you're someone who is into creative things, this is a message that you would benefit from, you know, making some time for your creativity, for your hobbies, and not thinking all the time about whether you're being productive and whether you're really working towards your career goals in the long term. And just do things for fun. So family, beautiful, blessed, all right? The beautiful part, okay? Some of you, you might be looking better than usual, especially once you get more rest and sleep. And beautiful and also, again, makes me think of beautifying your environment and just focusing on beauty and the finer things in life in general. And family, this could be that you're going to have stronger connections with your family or going to get in touch with family, which makes sense because, hello, most of, I mean, a lot of the world is going to be celebrating Christmas. <laughs> so uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, and uh, I don't know what other holidays are going on in December, but a lot of the world, right? So they're going to get together with family. That makes sense for a lot of people. And uh, we have blessed, which again, uh, I, I remind you one more time. This is about opportunities coming your way. Some things are going to be opening up for you, but you need to pay attention and you need to have the peace of mind, the quietness, the restedness to notice these opportunities and to take advantage of them when they come. 
So this has been it. This is what I have for you, pile number one. I hope you have enjoyed this. Once again, don't forget to comment in the comment section with any feedback you would like to give. Also, feel free to come back to this reading and tell me how December goes by the end of it. I'm really curious. And if you like the radio, the reading, <laughs> See, I've totally been talking for too long. I need to take a break. <laughs> anyway, if you like the reading, not the radio, but if... <laughs> don't forget to like and uh, subscribe to my channel. Also, is the easiest way to support me and it is free. Also, consider clicking on the notifications bell if you want to be notified when I post a new reading. And also, if you would like to support my channel further with, uh, I mean, you can do so with a tip, of course. And if also, if you want to become a member for a small monthly fee. And if you're interested in a private tarot reading, I have left a link to reviews. I have gotten four private readings before in the video description if you want to check them out. And if you're interested in getting a reading from me, you can email me at the email address I've also left in the video description. I will leave you a list of reading options with prices and all other details. And last but not least, I have an astrology channel where I focus mainly on Vedic astrology, but also with some tropical insights. I have more than 20 years of experience reading astrological horoscopes. And yeah, if you like astrology, check out my... Uh, channel. I will leave a link in the video description as well. Maybe subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you have a great month of December. Bye! Welcome pile number two. This is your reading if you have chosen this card, number 19, The Gathering and or this red jasper crystal. So this is going to be the card selection phase. I'm going to add timestamps so you can skip directly to the interpretation if you don't want to sit through this. I'm going to start with the tarot cards. Okay. Spare, tell me about pile number two, the people who chose the red jasper. What is the month of December 2024 going to bring for them? Let's see, we have four of swords. We have Three of Cups, we have Judgment, we have Three of Pentacles, we have Two of Swords, we have the World card. Spirit, tell me what is coming into pile number two's life in the month of December. 2024 what do they need to hear this doesn't feel right or does it let me see this feels right i just out of curiosity oh wow we have the two of cups I don't know, it didn't feel right, but let me see. Spirit, tell me, give me one more card. What is happening for pile number two? Okay. Let's see. We have Ace of Wands. We have the Temperance. We have Justice. We have Ten of Wands. We have Ace of Cups holy shit we have the lovers okay so when the two of cups came in here um i think that was meant to come here i'm sorry spirit all right i was confused i know spirit will get pissed off at me because i don't trust it <laughs> anyway i probably sound insane to someone who is watching this like i'm talking to myself or something whatever this is a tarot reading if you want normality i don't know go watch some <laughs> religious videos spirit tell me tell me spirit uh, oops oh why is this backwards what is going on oh okay spirit tell me about pile number two Spirit, tell me about pile number two. 
so let's see what 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 do we have here final number two so first you have this card the gathering number 19 which 19 boiled down to a one in numerology which is ruled by the sun and it's really interesting because it mirrors the three of cups which also came out for you okay let's see we have abundance number one again which is ruled by the sun i'm liking the symmetry and we have grace um, oh, I also want to get another card. I keep forgetting about this deck. Spirit, tell me about pile number two. What is happening for them in the month of December 2024? Tell me. Tell me, Spirit. What do they need to hear? Oh my gosh! Armadillo. This came out for pile number one as well. So if you felt drawn to pile number one, maybe check it out. So we have Armadillo number seven with groundedness and we have number 14 buffalo north masculine earth for which i'm going to read the description from the booklet let me see i am buffalo i am giveaway i am the blending of mother earth nurturing and father sky wisdom i am patient determined consistent and constant step by step i can always be depended on i am strength of purpose and practicality itself my brothers the human beings use every part of my body with no waste i embody utility abundance and limitless provision i know vegans have left the chat <laughs> i'm sorry that's not from the book um i am giveaway if i have plotted into your cards today i am here to help you blend the grounding of mother earth and the animation and vigor of father sky I may be telling you to look at the movement in your life at this time to examine your ambition and energy. Ask yourself, what drives me? I may also remind you of the sacrifices it takes to make it, quote unquote. Utilize all of the resources at hand. Waste nothing. As I give away to you today, I hand over new understanding of your source and supply given to us by the Great Spirit. I am dependable. Wow. This is really, I mean, this is really deep. Also, I have a confession to make in case you haven't watched the, which I'm sure most of you don't watch the part where I select the cards. But at first, the two of cups actually came out here and I didn't look at it at first. Like the cards just, I felt drawn to pulling two cards together and I thought it wasn't meant to come out. Like it just didn't feel right. You know, and then I put it back in, but just before putting it back in, I checked to see what kind of card it was, and I saw it was the Two of Cups. So I put it back in, um, because I wasn't sure, it just didn't feel right, um, and then the Ace of Cups came out. But then when I saw that the last card is the Lovers, I have to admit, I wonder if the Two of Cups was meant to be here. Also, the Ace of Cups is not too far in meaning, but I just thought I would mention that. Okay, so I'm going to kind of take this as this should have also been two of cups, ace of cups, maybe, or two of cups energy. I'm going to look at both of those meanings. But what I see right off the bat, pile number two, is there's a lot of sun energy. And the sun energy is about heart chakra. We also have the ace of wands here in the first place, clarifying the four of swords. So the sun energy is about passion, it's about what you love, it's about happiness and joy, it's about purpose, it is about, you know, going after what you want, it's also about dramatic arts, creativity. So it's basically authenticity, it's about being yourself. And we have, this is you at the beginning of the month. We have the Four of Swords clarified by the Ace of Wands. So this is showing me that you are basically recharging your batteries. You have spent some time in recent history to recharge your batteries. Or maybe you have actually completely recharged your batteries. Like right now you're feeling very energized because maybe you have had a time of rest. You know, maybe this could have been, I don't know, you recently had a holiday or... Um, you, um, for some reason, I don't know, stopped working for a while or whatever. Like you've just had a period of time where you were not as busy in recent history. So 
this puts you in a position where you suddenly have more energy and you have that freedom of being yourself for some reason. It's like, you know how children are when children are, you know, because they don't have to worry about survival and having a job and everything. It's like they can just be themselves and then don't have to think about, you know, social pressures and jobs and all that. So you're closer to that energy. I'm not saying that you're being a child, but you're getting more in touch with that energy. Maybe some of you um, are questioning how passionate you feel about what you're doing for a living or you want to pursue something that makes you feel alive, that makes you feel purposeful, basically. So this is you at the beginning of the month, all right? But it's still kind of like an with a, not a clear direction. So it, you just I just see an awakening here. An awakening of you wanting more purpose in your life, you wanting more passion, more um yeah, more excitement, you know, more of that feeling of I know what I'm getting up in the morning every day for um for, sorry. And um and you want purpose, basically. That's what I'm seeing. We have the, this is so cool, like I said, with the symmetry between the number 19 and we have the Three of Cups here. So the Three of Cups clarified by the Temperance card. So what this is showing is that what is supporting you, you have a supportive network of people, whether maybe some of you realize it or not, but there are people around you that really care about you, that really want you to succeed. During this month, you might be getting more support than usual, and you might be somehow thrust into reconnecting with old acquaintances. Oh my god, it just made me think of that Carol. Should all acquaintance be forgot? I think it was Auld Lang Syne. Anyway, <laughs> maybe you should listen to that Carol. And uh, that vibe is like... Well, of course, like I've said in the previous reading as well, because some cards came up, I said, you know, the month of December is the month where a lot of people are getting together because there are all these holidays. But with you in particular, I'm, I'm uh, you know, the Three of Cups is about a reunion. So it is about reuniting with people that are close to you. But this is about more, not necessarily so much family. It's about friends. It's about peers. You know, it's uh, also celebrations and having a good time and we have the temperance underneath which makes me think that it's one message that is coming from spirit is that this is a month where you will have to find a balance between focusing on relationships focusing on socializing and you know how much time you give to yourself kind of finding a balance where you don't sacrifice one for the other I feel like Spirit is also telling you this month you're going to have to work on relationships or not necessarily, again, not necessarily the relationship itself, but the balance, you know, having time for both yourself and for someone else or meeting with your friends, you know, it could be your entire social life, not a specific person, not just your partner, for instance. This part is really dramatic to me. We have the justice, we have, uh, we have the judgment actually clarified by the justice. This is, okay, in a very specific way, for some of you, this is actually about a legal thing. You know what I'm thinking? Uh, okay, I'm going to hold this thought because I don't know, this is really specific, but <clears throat> I'm, you know, with the justice, there could be something holding you back. This could either be literally the legal system or this could be about engagements. It could be contracts, okay? So it could be maybe even a work contract somehow holding you back this month, giving you frustration, um, keeping you from doing what you really want to do. But the judgment and the justice, this is a pretty um, this is a pretty intense energy here. This is not just about justice in like a very down-to-earth uh, human way. This is also about potentially a karmic cycle. So if it feels throughout this month that maybe you are coming across situations that seem unfair, it could also be that it is something to do with karma. Some kind of a clearing out of past karmas, you know. But this is overall um, time this month is going to be a time when you 
are going to close a lot of loose ends. When it comes to relationships, I see it more than than anything else. So, um, well, not just relationships, like, in, again, not in a romantic sense. This could also be about, you know, closing some deals, <laughs> some uh, old debts that have to be repaid towards certain people. You know, this is what I'm seeing with the month of December, with the justice especially. I also see that there will be judgment against you like literally this could be the you fearing judgment or this could actually be judgment like it could be people who are naysayers who are critical so since there's so much sun energy here this makes me think of two separate things two main things this could be romance because we also have the lovers but this could also be you pursuing your heart's desire right so you want to pursue something you're passionate about. This could be a hobby. This could be a different career path. But you are terrified of judgment. Or you might actually have to face quite a lot of judgment. That's something that I'm seeing here. We also have three of pentacles, the ten of wands. So spirit's advice when it comes to what you should be doing, what approach you should be taking this month. It's also advice and it's also to some extent, well, it's kind of like the direction you are heading towards. Holy crap, the more I look at this, the more I'm seeing a very clear picture. I really think that for some of you, this is about you're changing careers or something. Or you're starting a new hobby um, for many of you, not for everyone. Because again, bear in mind that I'm reading this for a lot of people. And... You're really thinking about pursuing something new because the three of pentacles is about being an apprentice. It's like someone who is starting an entry level job. So take this how it resonates. For some of you, this could be you're starting a new position. It could even be a new position within your company and you're going to have to be put in a position where you have to do a lot of work because you're starting from a beginning level. For some of you, this could be your very first job ever. You know, and the Ten of Wands is showing that you will have a lot of responsibility, a lot of work. You know, it's a lot of, um, you know, being by yourself, you know, you against <laughs> you against the machine, not necessarily against the machine. You know what I mean? But you're going to be swamped by responsibilities. And this is because it's going to be hard, you know, just like anything at the beginning is hard. When you're starting out in a new job or a new profession or learning a new skill, it's something that is very time consuming, that is very draining. So this is what I'm seeing throughout the month of December, that you are going to have to work hard at, you know, crafting something, a skill. Hold on a second. Please clarify the Ten of Wands, Spirit. Please clarify the Ten of Wands. Oh, holy shit. Oh, here we have it. Here we have it. Okay. Prudence. <laughs> the Eight of Pentacles, y'all. Clearly, this is about profession. This is very much... This is like beyond any, any, any doubt that I have. You are working on building something. Maybe a new career trajectory. Um, you're going to be called to, okay? Bear in mind, of course, you do have free will, so you can just sit on your bed and do nothing. <laughs> but this is um, basically what Spirit is telling you is if you are embarking on a new career path, a new job, a new profession, a new skill you want to learn, you're looking at a lot of work, a lot of work. All right. Um, this this is just that's that's just what it is. It's a heads up. You're going to have to do a lot of work this month. And then we have the two of swords clarified by the ace of cups. This is what I talked about. Bear in mind what I said. This this originally was supposed to be the Two of Cups. And then I pulled another card in my infinite wisdom. And again, I still stand by my decision that it didn't feel right. All right. So maybe the Ace of Cups is a better match. But I'm still going to look at it as if it were the Two of Cups and the Ace of Cups together. So this is the near future. All right. And we have the Two of Swords. And again, just bear with me here because I have to clarify. Spirit, please clarify the Two of Swords for me. 
Please clarify the Two of Swords. Spirit, come on. Please clarify the Two of Swords. Okay, we have the Six of Pentacles. Okay, the Six of Pentacles actually speaks of being in a position where you are generous and service. This could also have to deal with children. One more. Please clarify the Ace of Cups for me, Spirit. Please clarify the Ace of Cups. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> okay, I get it, Spirit. You really want the Ace of Cups. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, I apologize. I was not cussing at you, Spirit. I know I probably sound like a schizophrenic, but honestly, if you don't understand what I'm doing, then why are you watching this? So anyway, obviously, <laughs> it's very Ace of Cups. The whole situation is very Ace of Cups. So this is how I would read it, right? Because the Ace of Cups came out twice, for those of you who are not watching the video. So I asked Spirit to clarify the Ace of Cups, and I got the Ace of Cups, okay, from the second deck. This is you opening your heart, okay? We have the Ace, but with the Six of Pentacles here, clarified by the Six of Pentacles. You know what I'm getting here? This is a classic tale of obligation versus pursuing your heart this is what i'm getting here so this could be about a romantic interest because again bear in mind i said it it was initially it came out as the two of cups so it could be about some romantic interest showing up in your life either may have shown up recently or will show up in the month of december and you might be in a position where you are kind of um, torn between should I go for this person? Should I follow my heart? Because there might be something about them that is just not sitting well with you. Or maybe you're, you're, um, it's not your usual type or you're thinking that this will never work for some reason. This could be one explanation. But the other one, considering the rest of the cards, this is about career. All right. This is about should you be pursuing your heart's desire? And you're going to feel kind of undecided. You know, you're kind of like sitting there because the two of swords is a position of uh, where should I go? You know, which way should I stay or should I go? You know, kind of like that song. So this is you thinking about should I choose duty or should I choose my heart's desire? This is ultimately what it means. Whether it's about a relationship, whether it's about um, a career, a job. And then the ending, the outcome, is the world clarified by the lovers. This is definitely very specific. Okay, so again, I'm going to look at it from the two different perspectives. If this is about a love interest, this could be about you ending up in a relationship or meeting someone who is from a very far away place with a world card. Someone who comes from a different culture, different background. So it's about starting a new relationship or meeting someone who's going to become a future partner by the end of this month, all right? The other way to look at this, if you are in that career uh, trajectory of like, should I go for my heart's desire or should I stay with what is comfortable? The lovers here, this is just showing that if you choose your heart's desire, this is the world opening up for you. So a lot of opportunities are going to show up for you as long as you pursue your heart's desire. This is what I'm getting here, all right? I have to admit, this one is, is a, was a bit of a tricky reading. I, I'm feeling like a lot of uh, different, I mean, not tricky, you know? It's just the messages seem quite specific. So I'm really curious to see what you think about this in the comment section. But let me get the, let me get the astrological cards now. Spirit, tell me about pile number two. What is the month of December 2024 going to bring for them? Holy moly. We have Mercury. Mercury, number 14 is ruled by Mercury because it boils down to a number five. So we have Mercury 
we have the north node of the moon we have sagittarius this is the world card we have the 12th house spirituality and art and we have the south node as well old karma what did i say <laughs> what did i say pile number two I know people don't want to hear this, but karma is real and we all have to go through it. We all have to pay our debts. So I'm definitely seeing some karmic stuff going on here. Like I said, it could be that um, it's like, you know, I don't want to be the bringer of bad news in general. But generally, when I see the judgment, when I see justice, this could be you having to deal with obstacles. Um, again, it could be from the legal system, some kind of authority figure getting in your way, um, making things difficult for you. And it could just seem to come out of nowhere. You know, like you're wondering, why is this happening to me? Or uh, why is this person giving me crap or something? And it could be something to do with past karma. It, of course, in some very specific situations, it could be a person you've had a previous beef with, and now suddenly they're going to show up again. Beef with, you get it. Because uh, you had the buffalo card. <laughs> I'm sorry. We also have Mercury here. Mercury is about business. It's But it's also kind of the apprentice. It's a lot of youthful energy, all right? It's about uh, being open-minded. It's about trying new things, being versatile. It's also about studying, all right? So I see this as a confirmation of that Three of Pentacles coming up. North Node of the Moon, this is again dealing with foreigners and foreign lands some of you could be traveling to a foreign country or again someone i'm seeing this with the world something's going on with the world i mean another way to look at this because you have the world and the lovers this could be of course the most banal uh, interpretation is you could be a, taking a trip with your romantic partner but this could be about you traveling and meeting someone this could be about um like I said, starting a new relationship, but this could also be about the love of travel, you know, somehow you're going to travel for fun in the month of December, especially since we also have Sagittarius, the world explorer, and the 12th house. The 12th house is not just about spirituality, it's also about faraway places, all right? And we do have a lot of, let's not forget, we also have abundance here with the number one. So we do have money coming in for you as well. Mercury can show multiple streams of income. Oh my god. This is a totally um, new perspective that I maybe didn't mention, but I kind of thought about it several times. We have abundance. We have that card that says you're you're being taken care of. I am the giveaway card. That's what it said. I'm, gi I'm, I'm giving you things for free. Number 14. So what this translates into is you could be getting either some kind of a windfall in December... Or you're going to be in some kind of a position financially where, like I said in the beginning, you're kind of like in this child energy of reconnecting with your passion, starting thing from the some, something, starting something from the beginning, learning a new skill. This could be because you're going to feel comfortable financially to do that. Things are going to be working out for you, maybe new financial opportunities where, you know, it's like you suddenly make money easy, so therefore you can focus on learning something you really want to learn or doing a job you really want to do. This is what I'm seeing here. Okay, let me get let me get the dice and the charms. Spirit, tell me about pile number 2, what is coming towards them in the month of December 2024. Oh my gosh, what do we have here? We have the sun. What did I say initially? We have so much sun energy. This is about you being authentic. And pursuing your heart's desire and being confident and we have the number two which is ruled by the moon it's also could be the second house which is the house of possessions and savings and family and we have pisces again we do have 12th house and pisces showing up again both pisces and sagittarius are ruled by jupiter so this could just be about traveling but pisces is also a very romantic sign it's also you know where venus is exalted so this, again, makes me think that some of you are going to have some kind of romantic thing going on in December. A lot of romance. Either you're going to meet, like I said, you're going to meet someone or... It's not like necessarily you're going to meet someone and you're going to, you know, get engaged within a week. 
but you might be meeting someone that is going to ignite your feelings, you know, going to make you feel romantic, some kind of a love interest or a future love interest. But overall, this is a pretty, I'm seeing a lot of, you know, um, spirituality and art, just like it says, you know, so a lot of poeticism and inspiration and wanting to create beautiful things. This is what I'm seeing here, like doing things just for the sake of them being done. As in, you know, doing things because you love to do them as opposed to doing things out of duty. All right. Let's see what else. Spirit, tell me about pile number two. What can they expect? Oh, my. Okay. Wow. We have two hummingbirds. We have two hummingbirds. This makes me think of Mercury energy as well. Because, not just because it's flight, but because it's fast moving. So, I'm seeing a lot of agitation. But it's also make me making me think of... Um, kids you know having that kind of childlike sort of energy where you're uh super excited and like can't wait to do things and this is what i'm getting here with the hummingbird i don't think i've ever had these come out twice this is really strong i'm also wondering if maybe some of you have placements in revati nakshatra because there's connection there's you know pisces coming out twice and then we have the birds revati is connected to flying Okay, we have a heart here, which is very beautifully decorated. Again, that makes me think of romance. We have this hand here, which I just dropped under my desk. <laughs> okay, I picked it up. Makes me think of Indian culture to some extent. Makes me think of henna paintings. But this can also be um, something to do with Hasta Nakshatra. Again, this is really specific. But we do have some moon energy with the number two coming out. Um, and Hasta Nakshatra, which falls in Virgo, it is symbolized by the hand and it's very much about handy and doing things with your hands. However, irrespective of the Hasta Nakshatra or not, this could be about, again, spirit encouraging you to do things with your hands, like doing things that are creative and uh, keep you busy in a positive sense. Mercury also rules the hand, so that's another, you know, correspondence. We have this, which makes me think of kind of a temple inscription or something. And um, I think it's written, there's something in Chinese written on it, but I have no idea what it is, obviously. Um, so this is going hand in hand with spirituality. Maybe some of you are getting in touch with religion, with a sense of faith, because we do have a lot of, also K2, it's very much about spirituality, you know. So it's not necessarily just religion as in an organized religion, but maybe a lot of you are going to feel drawn to developing that spiritual side a lot more maybe even building some rituals we have blessed we have beautiful coming out twice actually three times we have beautiful coming out three times the lovers is also venus energy so maybe some of you are going to have a glow up but it's not just about you looking more beautiful i think this is about you having more beauty in your surroundings we also have the sword which is well that five of <laughs> um well not not so much actually but it is maybe about having to hustle that's what it makes me think the ten of wands we also have this which always makes me think of a musical key Okay, so this is really more specific, but Hasta is also connected to music. So maybe some of you are playing instruments or you're maybe starting to learn an instrument because we have that Ten of Wands. That's very specific. If that's not the case, this is also just about having more music in your life. Um, this could also be about attending concerts, of course. Family, spending more time with family, which again makes sense considering that it's December. And we have Dream. For some reason, I'm getting that song in my head, a dream, a little dream of me. I don't know what the lyrics are, and I don't want to torture anyone. It's something like, clouds floating up above me. I don't remember what it was like, but it was something about dream, a little dream of me. And we have the heart here. <laughs> we have the heart with the increased pulse. Um, Yeah, this is again... 
that Venus energy. This is really you. Um, I have to say, okay, it's not just about pursuing passions. I, I really think for some of you, this is about romance. It's like romance entering your life. You're going to fall in love, maybe, or some kind of new relationship starting. We also have the turtle. And it makes me think of slow and steady wins the race. This is also about 10 of wands. So you're definitely, because like I said, there are multiple things happening here. I also think you're going to have to deal with obstacles because of the justice card. This could also be the sword. You know, you having to deal, you know, with some kind of unpleasant situations. Okay, I had to put out the candles because there's wax all over the place. But yeah, you could be dealing with unpleasant situations. Um, and, but then there's also the theme of you starting a new endeavor, working on a new skill, potentially a new job. And there's also the theme of you being provided for and trust that you will be provided for in order to pursue what you want. And then there is the theme, which again, may not be for everyone, but there is definitely the theme of romance. So it's like some of you are going to start a new relationship, develop a new love interest, so keep me posted this is pretty much what i have for you pile of number two i hope you have enjoyed this i definitely have and if you have don't forget to like the video subscribe to my channel click on the notifications bell if you want to see when i will upload a new reading comment in the comment section with any feedback you would like to give ideas for future topics that you would like me to cover and um, if you're interested in supporting me further of course you can do so um, through a tip or through becoming a member in exchange for a small monthly fee. If you're interested in getting a private tarot reading from me, check out the video description. I've left a link to reviews. I have gotten four private readings before. If you're interested in seeing them, I might help you decide if you want to get a reading. And I've also left my email address there. You can email me for a list of pricing options and reading options and other details about private readings if you're curious to get one. And last but not least, I also have a astrology channel, <laughs> astrology channel where I focus on Vedic astrology mainly, but also with some tropical insights. I have more than 10 years experience in reading Vedic astrology and over 20 years of all kinds of astrological systems. I started with tropical, but I also dabbled in numerology, Batsa, Ziwei Doshu, Mayan zodiacs, and all kinds of astrological systems, but I mainly focus on Vedic on my channel so if you're interested in astrology go ahead and check it out maybe subscribe i would greatly appreciate it thank you very much for listening and i hope you have a great month of december 2024 and i hope to see you at my next reading bye so welcome pile number three this is your reading if you have chosen this card the herb garden her herb garden actually number two and or this blue aragonite so this is going to be the card selection phase. I am going to add timestamps so you can skip directly to the interpretation. Spirit, tell me about pile number three, the people who chose the Aragonite Crystal. What is the month of December 2024 going to bring for them? We have Five of Swords, we have the Emperor, we have the Hermit, we have the Nine of Wands, we have the Queen of Pentacles, we have the Five of Pentacles. Spirit, tell me about pile number three, the people who chose the Aragonite. What will the month of December 2024 bring for them? We have the Eight of Pentacles, we have the Devil, we have the World, we have the Three of Cups, we have the Two of Cups, and we have the Three of Pentacles. All right. Wow. So, let's see. Let's get some Oracle cards. 
Spirit, tell me about pile number three. What is coming towards them in the month of December 2024? What is coming for pile number three in the month of December 2024? What is coming towards file number three in the month of December 2024? What is coming towards pile number three, the Aragonite, in December 2024? All right, so let's see. We have number 25, Reproach. Okay, with the snakes. Makes me think of Ashlesha. We have Guardian Angel. We have number 38, Fear, Hyena. Hmm. Gosh. This card is creepy AF. I've never seen it before. <laughs> okay, Hyena, number 38. This is um boiling down to a number two again. We have number two, her herb garden. We have 38, which boils down to a number 11, which is a master number that is, is also ruled by the number two, which is the moon. And we have 49, boils down to a number 13. We have red coral, feminine, first chakra, fire. And I'm going to read the description for this from the booklet. Let me see. I am red coral. I am from the ocean, yet I am the blood of Mother Earth. I am your protection against natural emergency and personal misfortune. And the courage you need for survival. I have exceptional healing, cleansing, rebuilding, and invigorating power. At my foundation is passion that can be excited to rage. I am the stone of the home of safety and well-being. You can rely on my wisdom to assist you in your journey. Remember the ocean from where I come and protect my home as I protect yours. Wow, badass. I mean, uh, you know what I'm getting from this red coral? We have the moon, like I said. So this is a very protective Cancerian sort of energy. This is what I'm getting. First chakra fire. Okay, so pile number three. Look at this. You have a lot of passion, pile number three. And um, what I'm seeing here is at the beginning. So when you are watching this reading, okay, or at the beginning of the month of December, basically, or in recent history, uh, this is your status quo. You have the Five of Swords clarified by the Eight of Pentacles. So this means that you are someone who has been engaged intellectually in an intellectual profession, learning some kind of intellectual skills, polishing your mind, you know, learning new things. So for some of you, of course, this could be you're in university or have recently graduated from university, but I'm just seeing someone who is studying, who is very determined and, you know, has worked hard to acquire new skills. You're working towards your job, basically, okay? This is definitely effort being put in the professional sphere. And then what is going to help you in the month of December is the emperor clarified by the devil, this is really fascinating to me. So actually, I'm going to, I want to clarify the devil because I want to get more insights. Spirit, please clarify the devil for me. We have the two of wands. Wow. All right. Um, this is telling me that what is going to help you. This is really specific, but it's people who admire you. All right, in the month of December, basically, your sex appeal is going to help you, your charisma. For some of you, it's positions of a, people in positions of authority we have with it, with the emperor. So 
you're going to be getting some support in the month of December from people in positions of authority. Due to your charisma and due to, I think, your determination as well. You are going to impress people with your determination. People see potential in you, especially, again, people in positions of authority. They're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. You have the ability to basically rebirth yourself from the ashes. There are going to be people, this is really specific, but you're going to get a second chance at something in the month of December. So if let's say you have, I don't know, been trying to get a particular job and you kept applying many times, you're going to get another chance at that in the month of December. And it's way more favorable this time, much higher chances that you're actually going to get what you want. could be an admission exam for instance you're going to have the chance to take it again but anything that you can try for the second time basically you're going to have a second chance at something this is what you're getting support from i also see that you're potentially getting support from people from faraway places we have the hermit and the world on three the third position um, okay, this is, again, pretty specific, but I think some people need to hear it. I think you're going to, for some of you, you're going to be frustrated this month because you feel isolated because you need to travel. You need to travel or this is about the closing of a chapter or it's basically some kind of changing circumstances, you know, it's like you're going to, but I'm seeing mostly travel here. Either travel or it could be people from a foreign country. So, for instance, again, you might be someone who's working for a foreign company and they will ask you to work for Christmas, for instance, and that will frustrate you. But I'm not saying this is just an occasional thing. I think that throughout the month of December, you might feel a bit cut off a bit isolated from people you care about and from what you would, you know, the people you would like to spend time with. For some of you, this is not about being physically cut off. This is about you feeling lonely, you know. It's, um, you could be feeling like you don't really have people close to you that really understand you, you know, that, um, that feel like real family, you know, like your soul family, so to speak. And still, it is because you are true to yourself, you know, that you end up in a position of isolation. So I could be going off on a limb here, but I think that this pile are the unusual piles. <laughs> like, <laughs> this pile is the more unusual one. Um... Like, you're a little bit weirder than average, all right? You're maybe someone who has always felt like you don't fit in or you have struggled to make to, to make close connections or it's probably because you have a kind of personality that does not match any kind of stereotype that people expect. So, you know, I'm getting actually Lilith energy here. This is really specific, maybe, again. I mean, I feel all of this feels really specific because... But um, I should just shut up about specific and just follow the cards. But this is what I'm getting, really. I am getting some kind of a wild feminine archetype because you have the moon energy coming out strongly twice, all right? And then you also have this card with the red coral that's like, you know, I like I will protect you, but if you mess with me, I will F you up, you know? It's a very, it's kind of like feminine, but it's extremely fierce as well. You know, so it's kind of like a mother bear sort of energy. So that's why, that's what I'm getting here. I also have these two snakes here intertwined with reproach, which boils down to number seven here, 25, which is the number that is connected to solitude. I think I've said this in other readings that I, whenever I see number seven a lot, always makes me think of the hermit energy, even though the hermit has the number nine on it. Um, but seven is actually the, it's kind of like the mad genius archetype. You know, people who are inside their heads and pursuing their own visions. 
We also have guardian angel here, which is a strong message from spirit that you are protected. I think you could also be someone who suffers from a lot of anxiety. You know, even though the cards did not like the typical cards connected to anxiety did not come out. But we do have a lot of moon energy. We have the hyena with fear, you know. So I think you're someone who is easily startled, you know, which is typical of very uh, feminine energy. Because first of all, because feminine energy tends to be very empathic and tends to pick up any kind of small threats or changes in the environment you know so there's a lot of like overstimulation i again i could be going off on a limb but maybe some of you are even neurodivergent i also get the sense of solitude here with her herb garden number two it's like her herb garden so it makes me think of someone who's kind of like content in their solitude but they might still be longing for meaningful connections you know but it's like, I, that's what I'm getting here. It could be like, you're a person that feels pretty comfortable in solitude, but you still want like meaningful connections. Like at least a handful of people that you can call your tribe that you can trust, you know? So this is what I'm seeing. Okay, I'm sorry if it sounds a bit negative, basically, but I'm seeing a bit, a bit of isolation, kind of a, an almost kind of for, forced isolation by outside circumstances. This is what I'm seeing here. Maybe you're even very specifically for those of you who are traveling or you're away from your um, place of birth, you just feel um, out of place. You know, you feel like you can't relate to the people around you. You're you're kind of like, makes me think of that song by Sting, you know, I'm an alien, I'm an Englishman in New York. <laughs> that kind of feeling, you know, kind of like being alone ar among strangers. This is what I'm feeling here. But obviously, it's irrespective of whether you're traveling or you're surrounded by strangers. This, I'm getting this sense of isolation here. And um, we have the Nine of Wands clarified by the Three of Cups. So here things are looking up here. Oh my God. So this is a very strong message from Spirit that you need to open up. The Nine of Wands is an energy that speaks of defense, defensiveness. And the Three of Cups is like the opposite of solitude. It's about reunion. It's about getting in touch with people that make you feel good, that are part of your tribe, that are supportive, you know, that you can enjoy and be yourself with. And this is what Spirit is telling you. This is the action side of the reading, right? So this is what Spirit is kind of nudging you to lower your defenses a little bit, to open up and get in touch. Well, this is about also getting in touch with, um, you know, people that maybe you took for granted or, you know, I feel it's also a message of like, maybe you should stop being so perfectionistic when it comes to relationships. Like maybe you hold people to very high standards and in so doing, you um, don't really see the people that maybe might be nice to you, might be open towards you, you know, but you don't even consider them or you don't even notice them because they're not up to your standard. So I feel like spirit, it's like a double message, like on the one hand, you know, lower your defenses because you might come across someone who's actually part of your soul tribe. But it's also about appreciating the connections you already have even though they may not seem perfect right now. And then we also have the Queen of Pentacles here with the Two of Cups. Wow. See, here's the thing. Um, this is definitely, you know, the Two of Cups is definitely about romance. But this could also, because it's coming from the Queen of Pentacles, this could also be about a partnership. A business partnership. Either way, the Two of Cups speaks of someone that you might be getting in touch with or coming into your life that you're going to have an equal give and take with, you know. So it could definitely be romance. It could be someone approaching you that you have already met. It could be someone that you're going to meet for the first time and you suddenly develop an infatuation with. But somehow, you know, there's some romance budding with the two of cups here also this is near future right 
So by the end of this month, something's going to go on here with the Two of Cups. Like I said, if it's not romantic, this is about a partnership, a business partnership. But I really think for many of you, this is about romance. And finally, we have the Five of Pentacles. We have the Three of Pentacles. This is you gaining financially with little effort. The Three of Pentacles, this shows kind of, well, it's, it's again, several messages in one. Number one is learning to communicate at work, okay? Learning to get along with people from different cultures, from different backgrounds, from different uh, professional, um, you know, interests is definitely going to open up new financial possibilities for you and new um, success when it comes to your work life, right? So in other words, networking is also a good thing that you could be doing more of at work in order to increase your financial gain. Aside from that, this is also showing, I mean, the three of, sorry, sorry, three of pentacles is an energy that is not very advanced. You know, it's kind of like an apprentice energy. It's someone who is studying and it's like um, studying and you might know the basics, but you're still, you know, not an expert and you there's still a lot you have to learn. But the five of pentacles over it shows that you might actually find some line of work or your profession you, or you might be, I don't know, move to a different team in your company where you actually are getting more money for less effort. This is what I'm seeing here. Of course, for those of you who are self-employed, this could be about you getting, you know, thinking about a new endeavor or putting out some new service or a new product that, again, is going to make you make money, a lot more money than usual by not working as hard. Maybe even coming into passive sources of income, you know, creating a passive source of income. So there might be some kind of significant step taken towards this by the end of the month. This is what I'm seeing here. But you know what? <laughs> um, I'm really curious. So I'm going to pull out another clarification because I, I need to know. Okay, Spirit, please clarify the two of cups here. Please. All right, this one? Really? I don't know. This one, okay. Holy moly, we have karma. Oh my God, we have the judgment. Spirit, please clarify the judgment card. Ouch. Whoa. Ten of cup. What is going on here? Okay, I know what's going on, but I want to clarify the three of pentacles too. Please clarify the three of pentacles here. Here we have it. Wow. Are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on. Really? Why? Why, Spirit? <laughs> Okay, so I asked for a clarification for the Three of Pentacles, and I get a Three of Pentacles. Please clarify. Okay, I'm going to take the other deck, all right? Because maybe this deck needs uh, needs to nap. Um, Spirit, please clarify the Three of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. Oh, wow. So, Spirit definitely has some very strong messages for you. This is supposed to be a general reading, but I'm getting some really intense messages here. So, first of all... Ten of Cups here as an outcome with karma coming out. This is a faded encounter, all right? It's a faded encounter, number one. You're going to meet someone you're going to be meant to meet this month. So, see, here's the thing. The Two of Cups shows a new relationship. So it's definitely not going to be like an ex fiance right, <laughs> that you've had a five-year relationship with, but it may not necessarily be someone you meet now for the first time, all right? It could be someone coming towards you that maybe you have met at some point in the past, but there was nothing romantic happening between you. It could be someone you literally meet for the very first time in the month of December, but look at this. We had the Judgment and the Ten of Cups, this could be someone who is a significant romantic partner, maybe even your future spouse. And the judgment here is showing fatedness, but since it's also clarifying the Queen of Pentacles, well, it's not clarifying the Queen of Pentacles, but the Queen of Pentacles is over it, you know, it's over the Two of Cups. 
the way that I would read this is also that you or this person could be afraid of judgment or you might literally get judgment, okay? Uh, as in, I don't know, for whatever reason, maybe this person is from a different culture, different background, um, maybe they're very different than you, maybe there's a difference in social status, but somehow this is someone you're going to meet, get together with uh, at some point in the future. I'm not saying you're going to get engaged by the end of the month, right? Because like I said, this is the beginning. The Two of Cups is the beginning of something romantic. But in the long term, all right, this could be a romantic interest that is going to make people lift their eyebrows. Or let me put it to you like this, okay? Let's also take the second interpretation. Let's say that this is not a romantic partner, but this could be a partner in business. Still could be an issue of judgment. Could be that you will be, um, you know, will, you will have some hangups at the beginning. Like maybe you're going to be double guessing, double, yeah, guessing about whether you should pursue this. Maybe you're going to have um, questions, right? So you might want to investigate and vet this person before you move forward. But there's definitely some significant person coming into your life one way or another in December. And now let's move on to this little pile uh, with, you know, Spirit really loves the Three of Cups over here. I get it. Sorry, the Three of Pentacles. I don't know why I keep saying the three of, three of Cups. So I clarified, I wanted to clarify the Three of Pentacles and I got the Three of Pentacles again. And then I clarified the Three of Pentacles and I got the Six of Pentacles. Okay, so I'm getting a much clearer picture here. And this is going to come across as, um, again, specific. But we have the Six of Pentacles, which is about sharing information it's about guiding it's about being of service it is about teaching one way or another so clearly very specifically for those of you who have considered making a course selling a course this is a very huge green light from spirit telling you this is how you're going to make a lot of money all right we have the five of pentacles clarified by this and the five of pentacles this is a bit of a controversial take but it also has you know in some in traditional interpretations people say that it's about poverty but what i have come across in a lot of readings it's actually about hidden treasures it's about literally sitting on a you know, gold mine so this is a lot all right so this is very specific but even if this is not about a course okay this could be about a job this could be but it's especially connected to the six of pentacles which is about sharing it's about being of service it's about teaching others guiding others who are in a lesser position not in a lesser in the sense of less enlightened right as in not on your level of expertise so that's why it's especially connected to teaching okay but this could be even i don't know being involved in charity starting a chair i don't even though charities technically are shouldn't be about profit but any kind of situation, any kind of job or activity where you are putting yourself at service to others could be some profession or, you know, some kind of business endeavor that you're going to make a lot of money from. This is what I'm seeing here. Okay, so these are the cards. Let me get the astrological cards. These are the tarot cards. I'm going to get astral cards. Spirit, tell me. A lot of cards came out for you. I don't know. I felt really uh, inspired to take a lot of cards today. So, Spirit, tell me about pile number three. What is coming towards them in the month of December 2024? What is What should they focus on? What do they need to hear? Tell me. We have Trine, Support, and Inspiration. There we have that Three of Cups energy. Neptune, Dreams, and Spirit. We have Eighth House, Transformation, and Mystery. We have Seventh House, Love, and Partnership. Are you seeing this? Oh, my. And we have Aries, the Combative. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, okay, we have Scorpio. We have a lot of Mars energy, all right? We have 8th house, corresponds to Scorpio. We have Aries, ruled by Mars. Uh, we have 7th house, very strong confirmation. Love and partnership, all right? 
Seventh house is the house of marriage, but it's also the house of partnership-based business. So this is a very, very strong confirmation that you're going to be meeting someone or starting something. Maybe, again, maybe you are reuniting with someone that you've already met or they're taking a step towards you or you're taking a step towards them or you are going to run back into each other. Something. There's going to be some, some kind of step in the direction of a significant partnership during the month of December. So keep me posted. I'm very curious. So... Generally, I know I say the month of December, but give or take the inertia coefficient, coefficient, is that the word for it? Coefficient? Anyway, um, the multiplier, the signifier, the whatever you want to call it, um, take the inertia of the, of the reading and I would give it, let's say, a month and a half, right? So don't just be like, oh, it has to happen by the 31st or it's never going to happen. Um, cause it's not, you know, probably not going to be like very strongly delimitated when it comes to the time frame, but something's going to happen, all right, with the seventh house there, someone significant coming towards you, uh, for some of you, of course, very specifically, this is literally getting married, you know, or, or getting engaged if you're already in a relationship, you know, like taking a relationship to a step, you know, to the next step. And we have the eighth house transformation. Something big is happening this month. Again, Eighth house is not just about transformation. It's also about finances. It's also about joint finances. It's also about in-laws in some situations. So see how that resonates. But it's basically about resources, making the most of resources. And it's transformation, which can refer to, you know, huge gains in this situation, considering the rest of the cards that came out for you. It's kind of like a rags to riches sort of energy. But the eighth house also shows ups and downs. All right. So it also shows that you might have to deal with some obstacles. You might have to, you know, um, there might be, you know, like some unexpected situations, some ups and downs. Like I said, eighth house is also foreign lands, especially where there are foreign languages being spoken. So I also can see this as a confirmation of the world card that I was talking about. So dealing with people who are from different cultures, where there's a different language being spoken. See how that resonates, right? Like I said, I'm getting a lot of specific messages from this reading, so I'm very curious. All right. And we have Aries again. This is about you having to fight through. This is about your endurance being test tested. It's about staying uh, true to yourself and also firm on your ground. And it's also that kind of fiery protectiveness that this card was talking about. We also have fire here. First chakra fire. First chakra is also Aries. That's the root chakra. You know, so it's all about survival. It's about fighting. It's uh, pushing through. Aries is pioneering spirit, you know, so it's about pursuing something that you want to get done um, fearlessly. So spirit is definitely giving you a great uh, green light here to pursue whatever your passions or your ideals have been because you have high chances of them being realized. Or, or at least to a large extent, maybe not completely realized, but there are some huge progresses to be made in the month of December. All right, so I'm going to take the Astro Dice and the Charms. Spirit, what should pile number three expect in the month of December 2024? We have number 11. Okay, I switched it, but it was number 11, which is gains, huge gains, especially gains coming from career. Very strong confirmation. We also have Taurus, which is about... Um, staying power. It's about determination. It's also about kind of slow and steady wins the race. And we also have Saturn, which is hard work and determination. Yes. So your efforts are definitely going to pay off. But you're definitely going to be called to work hard. And Saturn also speaks of obstacles and hardships. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. With the 8th house and Saturn... This is telling you that basically the harder you work this month, the more you're going to gain. It's quite simple. But Saturn also speaks of you needing to think in the long term, having a plan, you know, not just thinking about, oh, what do I want right now or in the next month? But think about where do I want to be five years from now, 10 years from now? What, what do I want my legacy to be? 
Saturn is about doing things that will last, that will, that will stand the test of time. So this is about you being thorough. You know, spirit is telling you, be careful, be thorough, and you will get your rewards. And I feel like this is especially when it comes to that professional ideas or goals that you have. Yep. All right, let me get some charms. What can you tell me for pile number three? What are they getting in the month of December? We have the elephant coming out twice. I was actually going to say this. I'm getting very strong Barney energy from this pile. I also said Lilith. I mean, yeah. Lil I'm still standing by potentially Lil Lilith energy, but... I'm also getting strong uh, Barani nakshatra because that falls in Aries as well. And it's um, symbolized by the elephant. So that's a lot of, you know, Barani, also speaking of Saturn, it's a nakshatra that is connected to birth and like birthing things. So it's about things that are taking a long time to develop, but they are worth the wait. So this is the kind of energy that you have to embody in the month of December in order to be successful. Like I said, think about things in the long term. Um, and also think about quality. Things that are going to stand the test of time. Don't just think about what is cool right now or, you know, what do I, like I said, what I want in the next two weeks. Think about something that is going to be standing the test of time. For instance, especially when it comes to your professional life, like skills, even, you know, if you're thinking about learning new skills, go for something that is going to bring you success in the long term. Or don't be immediately intimidated by the fact that, oh, if I start learning about this, it's going to take forever to learn this skill or 10 years on average. Just think about, is this what you want? Is this going to be worth it for you in the long run? That's what you have to take into account. And then, let's see, what is this? Oh, we have hope. Okay, we have hope. We have blessed. We have family. We have hope twice. Wow. So I I think the fact that hope came out twice, I think, is showing that many of you are not particularly optimistic, which makes sense with Saturn because Saturn is, you know, a hard taskmaster. And uh, it's definitely about putting you through a lot of obstacles and you know, painful situations in order to test your determination and in order to make sure that you are thorough, you know. Saturn is also kind of the lord of karma. So anytime you step out of line or you do something unfair, it's going to come back to haunt you. And um, I wouldn't be surprised also if many of you are going through a lot of strong Saturn transits. Maybe your Saturn return, you know, when it's conjunct to the place where, where it was uh, when you were born. You know, like if you were born with Saturn in Sagittarius, Actually, right now, Saturn is going through Aquarius. So if you were born with Saturn in Aquarius, you're ha going through your Saturn return right now. So maybe that's a thing that could also be um, that if you, you know, you could be in your Saturn Dasha, Antar Dasha, if you are familiar with Vedic astrology. Or it could be that Saturn is just transiting um, with strong aspects to your natal horoscope. In which case, you're going to see a lot of frustrations, a lot of delays, a lot of obstacles and all that. A lot of you being put to the test and, again, to see if you have the determination and you have what it takes to deliver the goods, basically. That's what Saturn is after. We also have the moon here, which, well, again, you have the moon coming out strongly as well. Like I said, we have this, oh my god, and also fear here. Eighth house and Saturn are both connected to fears. So, yeah, if you have felt like... Uh, again, if you're going through like transits of Saturn and, you know, 8th house being activated, for instance, it could be that your 8th house, you know, that it could be that maybe you have had more fear than usual in the recent history, especially in the past years. We have the key here. This is, again, make me think of that five of pentacles. Like I said, it could be a hidden treasure. You're getting the key to a hidden treasure. And this also makes me think of secrets because the 8th house is about... What is hidden? What is unseen? Okay, I just got a message, but again, it's very specific. Some of you, in the month of December, you could be unlocking some kind of a secret. 
Um, the eighth house is about, like I said, it could be about in-laws, but it could also be about your family. Either way, it could be some kind of a secret, okay? Maybe not even connected to your family. It could be at work or something that, I don't know, like it's going to change your perspective on things. We also have the little snowflake. <laughs> Gosh, we have the snowflake and uh, we have this, well, decoration. It makes me think of a decoration, but it also kind of makes me think of winter, like ice decorations. So with the snowflake, I mean, obviously that could just be a reference to winter, but not everyone is going through the season of winter right now. And another thing is with the snowflake... I think that spirit is telling you that everything is transient and um, the opportunities that you are going to get now, you may not get a second time. And another thing with the snowflake is I really think that many of you who have this, you have gone through some rough times, you know, um, in recent history and you might still be in that you might still be in the winter one of your winters of your life you know moving on from a pretty cold situation especially with that hermit energy you know like the isolation because winter is about death you know winter is about the closing of chapters and i really think that this is kind of like spirit letting you know that it's fine like everyone goes through this and you're gonna make it through no matter how dark it seems and that ultimately spring is going to come and you're going to forget about all of this. And the guardian angel, angel here is like such a strong indicator that you are protected. Like I said, I feel like, again, because you have all this like fear and the Saturn in the eighth house and the hermit, um, spirit brought you this guardian angel card to remind you that you are not alone. All right. And then maybe sometimes you feel isolated, but you are not alone. And there are energies protecting you. There are energies wanting you to succeed. And even if other people don't see that, don't understand you, you shouldn't let that deter you from your vision. Because I can see that you're someone capable of great things. Look at the looking at these cards. With the Barony energy and everything, there's a very unique energy here. Like you are meant to produce something very unique in the world. Okay, this is pretty much what I have for you, pile number three. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. I definitely have very interesting, very strong messages. And also, if you have liked it, don't forget to like, subscribe to the video. Um, sorry, subscribe to my channel. I have been talking for too long. Comment in the comment section with any feedback you would like to give. You, of course, can come back to this reading after December is over. Let me know how it went. And um, also, you know, any suggestions that you have for future readings you would like me to do on this channel, I would take them into account. And if you would be interested in supporting me further, of course, you can do so through a tip or becoming a member or... Um, getting a reading a tarot reading <laughs> sorry i got distracted um okay getting a tarot reading and if you are interested in that i have left a link in the video description to reviews i have gotten four private readings before and i've also left my email address there you can email me for a list of pricing options and other reading details anything you would like to ask and last but not least, I also have an astrology channel where I focus mainly on Vedic astrology, but also with some tropical insights. And if you're curious, go ahead and check it out. I Like I said, I will leave it in the, in the video description. Maybe subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a great month of December 2024. And I hope to see you at my next tarot reading. Bye.